Hi guys, Annabelle here from Horizon Cosplay and today we are going to be taking a look at my Juliet cosplay that I made a few years ago. Now just so you all know, this cosplay is from the Romeo x Juliet anime and not the manga Shakespeare version of the story. Though at some point I really should cosplay that one too because oh my gosh the costumes in that are just... Ugh. Gorgeous. Now, before we get into the costume, let's talk a little bit about the series. Fair warning, I'm going to try to avoid spoilers, but no promises. So first, Juliet's character. At the beginning of the series, we see her whole family get murdered by the Montagues while she's still a small child. Narrowly escaping, she's put into hiding disguised as a boy named Odin. And years later, she's fighting the Montagues' harsh rule as a vigilante known as the Red Whirlwind. Sound much like the original Shakespeare book to you? No. And you know what makes it even better? Magical flying dragon horses. Honestly, these Magical Flying Dragon Horses were 110% my favourite thing in the entire series and honestly also the main reason I made a cosplay for it. If it weren't for those horses, I probably wouldn't have watched the whole thing. Anyway, back to the story. She meets Romeo, she falls in love. The Capulet supporters are planning to execute all the Montagues and put her back on the throne, which is when she finally comes out as a woman, which is, funnily enough, where this outfit comes in. At this point, she is a peasant living in a basement in a theatre, funnily enough, where Shakespeare is putting on his plays. Yes, even Shakespeare is a character in this anime. She knows how to fight and for all intents and purposes is a very strong and independent woman, making decisions with clear and concise judgment even when it comes to her love and affection for Romeo. She is a girl who is very aware of her position, both the dangers that she is in and the dangers that she represents. And if nothing else, we can definitely call her a princess of the people. So now that you guys have a basic understanding of the story, let's get into my interpretation of the outfit right from the top. The main orange fabric here, along with the cream lining, actually comes from a pair of old curtains that I found in a charity shop. Now on camera, the fabric actually looks a hell of a lot more shiny than it does in real life. But the main reason I like and chose this fabric is because when you see it from different angles, it has just that hint of blue. Now, I know, I know, I totally overthought this, but I just love the idea that she appears outwardly to be in orange, which is her family colour, but from the right angles you can see blue, which represents the Montagues, and her love, affection, and even loyalty towards Romeo, even if it doesn't also include his father. The fabric is some kind of synthetic material, and to be honest, it frayed really, really badly. So for the first time in my costume making career, I overlocked every raw edge I could find on this costume to hopefully make it last a little bit longer. Now, I did actually pattern the sleeves myself, but the main body of the dress is a very much shortened version of my favourite vintage pattern. Yep, style 4575 again. What can I say? It fits me so well. I just love it. For this dress, I did alter the neckline slightly and had the top done up at the back with buttons. In hindsight, the buttons were an absolutely terrible idea, no matter how good they look, because it actually means that no matter what, I can't put this top on myself. Not being able to reach around my back, I need someone else to do it up for me. Definitely if I made this costume again, or even ever wanted to wear it to an actual convention, adding a full of zipper up the back of the shirt would probably be my best plan of action. When it comes to the neckline, this small piece of red fabric you can see is a lovely piece of quilting cotton. It's actually from the same collection as the gold quilting cotton I use in my Daily and Kyoshi Warrior costumes, and the purple quilting cotton I use in my Barbie Fairy Queen. Can you guys tell that I just loved that collection? Next, we have this wonderful applique I ordered off AliExpress. This was the first sewing supply I ever ordered off AliExpress, and to be honest, I was surprised when it arrived at just how high the quality was. To attach it to the shirt, I decided to hand stitch on rather than machine stitch it, simply so that I didn't have to go all the way around the outside and instead just use some smart points, meaning that there's gaps where I can stick my finger under. The other small detail on the shirt that I just have to mention is the lace at the end of the sleeves. This lace was part of a DIY Christmas box that my mum sent me, filled with a bunch of different fabric lace and ribbon that she had left over from making Christmas decorations herself over the last few years. This lace just seemed too pretty to waste on a Christmas decoration and I knew I wanted to put it on a costume somewhere. So I saved it and was ecstatic when I realised I had the perfect amount to hem these gorgeous sleeves. And next we have the belt. Honestly, I got this belt from a charity shop when I had some old jeans that I wanted to wear around the farm. The problem with these jeans is that they were just way too big, but why get rid of old jeans when these ones work perfectly fine and I just need a belt to clinch them around the waist so that they fit? In all honesty, when wearing it with jeans, this belt was horribly uncomfortable, but as a thing that just sits loosely around my waist when I'm wearing cosplay, I have no complaints. And if nothing else, it's pretty and it definitely does match the outfit. To be honest, I much prefer belts that are a bit wider and have some elastic to them when they go around my waist which is the first upgrade I plan to do to this outfit if I ever do get the chance to wear it to a convention. This outfit was actually the first one I made for my 2020 convention list, however we all know that those plans flew out the window faster than cats with wings. So onto the skirt. In my personal opinion back then, skirts were the easiest thing to draft, and in my genius plan, I decided her skirt should be an A-line,
A-line one. So with a Google and a YouTube tutorial, we had the perfect A-line skirt drafted and ready to go, only to find out that I actually hadn't ordered enough fabric. Also in hindsight, I think an A-line skirt was a little bit too slim for her. I think that something a little bit more voluminous would have given the puffy effect that her outfit actually has in the anime. Anyway, this fabric I'd got from AliExpress. It's a brocade and again, phrased to the point of madness. So to make the pattern fit, I cut off a little bit of the width around the bottom of the skirt. It makes it a little bit annoying to pose in, however everyday walking isn't too badly affected. And then the dress was finally coming together. This beautiful gold lace around the bottom of the skirt also came from AliExpress and damn was I nervous when attaching it, I barely had enough. I was really chuffed with this lace though because just days after I'd attached it to my Juliet skirt, I saw someone on Instagram whose name I've pretty much forgotten now I'm afraid, use it to create the most incredible gold bell gown. Definitely made me feel like I was on the right track for my cosplays. The end of the skirt is trimmed with leftovers from the orange curtains. Originally it had been my plan to make both the skirt and the shirt out of the orange curtain fabric, however I decided against this in the end because when looking at it from further away I felt like I'd probably just look like a giant pumpkin. Not to mention that the whole outfit being one colour just made it feel a bit flat and unrealistic. So I'm really glad I changed it up in the end by using a different fabric for the skirt and the top. And though I think this costume looks really quite good in real life, I have to admit that taking photos with it is um, it's a bitch. Both the fabrics I chose are relatively reflective in light, something that though we can't necessarily see with our eyes, the cameras pick up on way too sensitively. It is incredibly frustrating. If I were to make this costume again, I'd definitely make undergarments for it first. I feel like a petticoat or two, along with a corset and maybe doing a few minor adjustments on the top, would really improve this costume tenfold. However, no way I'm doing this costume again. I do, however, want to make Juliet's Odin outfit at some point, and maybe a Romeo outfit for Ben actually while I'm on that subject. I think he'd look good in blue. Or maybe I'll just make a few things from the manga Shakespeare series, considering how much I absolutely love those books. I'm actually really surprised, considering that I read the entire Entire series out of the library that I never brought a single one of them. And actually talking to Ben, he did the exact same thing, read the entire series and never brought them, which is odd considering the size of his manga collection. So anyway, if you guys want to see me make another outfit for the Romeo X Juliet anime or the manga Shakespeare series, please leave me a comment down below and let me know which one you'd like to see. And with that guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with all my current cosplay projects. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and supporting me. I will see you next Wednesday and until then, have a beautiful day. Bye!